John Quincy Adams was not only an outspoken Christian, he was also an avid student of the Bible. He made it his practice to read through the Bible once every year. It is not surprising then that John Quincy Adams wanted his children to grow up knowing the Bible and how to study it. The difficulty with this desire was that during the time that his first son, George Washington Adams, was growing up, John Quincy Adams was overseas serving as a diplomat. Therefore, John Quincy Adams wrote nine lengthy letters instructing his son how to get the most from a study of God's Word. Those letters were published in this small book, Letters of John Quincy Adams to His Son on the Bible and its teachings. Today, we rarely think of a president as the author of a book on how to study the Bible, but John Quincy Adams was. The circumstances surrounding the death of John Quincy Adams are of particular interest, for death in those days was viewed differently than it is today. Since the scriptures taught in Hebrews 2.15 that one proof of a relationship with Christ was a freedom from the fear of death, observers were interested in how an individual reacted when he faced death. As one political historian in 1854 explained, it is customary, even among Christian people, to hold final judgment of a man's Christian character till it is seen how he makes his death. The manner of a man's death often works a change, sometimes a revolution in public opinion respecting the nature of his life. What then did observers see when John Quincy Adams faced death? For John Quincy Adams, that occasion occurred here in this room on Monday, February 21st, 1848. A local newspaper reporter recorded what transpired on that day. A sudden cry was heard on the left of the chair. Mr. Adams is dying. Turning our eyes to the spot, we beheld the venerable man in the act of falling over the left arm of his chair while his right arm was extended, grasping the desk for support. The speaker instantly suggested that some gentlemen move an adjournment. A sofa was brought in, and Mr. Adams, in a state of perfect helplessness, though not of entire insensibility, was gently laid upon it. On Wednesday evening, February 23rd, at a quarter past seven o'clock, he expired without a struggle. This is the end of earth. I am composed. These were the last words of John Quincy Adams, and he uttered them here in this room, the room in which he died. And this is the couch on which he died. You see here on the wall a bust of John Quincy Adams as a solemn reminder of what occurred here. Today, this room serves as the women's lounge where female members of Congress may come to rest and relax during congressional proceedings.